What's up guys? It's Russell Ori, aka Russell, and today I'm gonna show you guys how to squat like a powerlifter. Now a lot of you guys enjoy the bench how to power like a powerlifter, so today I'm gonna show you guys how to squat my thing. I'm gonna show you guys how to do my thing. This is what I love to do, squatting. So I'm gonna show you guys the mental cues I go through whenever it's time to start squatting. So let's get started. Okay, now let's talk about a really underrated part of squatting, and I think a lot of people don't think about this, but it's something you need to think about whenever you're squatting. So let's talk about the setup. The setup is, I think, is when a lot of people mess up. So as a football player, I kind of know that hyped up setup. Like you're kind of like, let's go, let's go, it's time to squat. Let's go, baby. let's go, come on, it's time to squat. Ah, oh, mm, mm, oh, let's go. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> so basically, what I'm trying to simulate and what I'm trying to show you guys is you're wasting a lot of energy doing that. Like you're, you're hyped up, you're getting hyped up, you're just wasting a lot of energy like trying to hype yourself up. And all that energy could go towards giving you more energy to have a better squat. So let's talk about the setup and you have to make sure that your setup is really, really consistent and basically simple. Something that can be repeated over and over and over again. And I struggled with this at first because I remember like I would just like get hyped up, I'd start slapping myself, wasting a lot of energy and getting out of the bar and finding out that I didn't have a lot of energy to give back towards my squat. So make it pretty simple. Basically what I like to think about is when I'm setting up, just have a set routine that you do that you can do over and over again. So what I like to do is kind of think about what I'm about to uh, do. Just kind of like visualize success inside of my mind, visualize myself squatting over and over again. Sitting right here, and I come, do my placement under the bar. And at this point, you don't want to get to a place where it takes you a lot of effort to get the bar off the rack itself. You want to get to a point where all you have to do is kind of squeeze your glutes and the bar pops off the ground. So I'm going to show you guys what it kind of looks like whenever we're about to squat. So, right here, focus, repeating, squat in my head, coming under the bar, face up, and at this point I'm just squeezing my glutes and the bar pops off. So, it's not too much about it, just squeezing my glutes and the bar pops off and then we get to the setup. So next let's talk about bar position. Now a lot of people will ask me high bar or low bar and this is like kind of like a big debate in the powerlifting world and even the bodybuilding world but high bar is more a comfortable position for most people but you're going to get a lot more power doing low bar. It really depends on your frame, it depends on your makeup, it depends on what you want to do but basically low bar you're going to get more power but it's going to be a lot more comfortable, it's going to put a lot more stress on your wrists and your elbows and I'm going to show you guys what low bar is and I do low bar. Um, so basically low bar is getting the bar under your traps, high bar is having the the bar rests on top of your traps. So when you're low barring, the bar is literally under your traps, kind of on your rear delt area, and it's going to put a lot more stress on your wrists and on your elbows. Okay guys, so another underrated part of squatting is the walkout portion of the squat. Now, you'll see a lot of people, they'll do like a million step walkout, and that's, once again, you're just wasting energy. And when you're walking the bar out, the weight is moving around and that takes energy to, to settle the weight. So you want to make sure you're moving as slow and as controlled as possible to make sure the weight isn't bouncing around and causing you to use more energy to balance it. So I'm going to show you guys how to properly walk out the bar. You want to minimize everything. You want to make everything as simple as possible so when you're walking everything out, you're, losing, you're using as, as little energy as possible. So once again, I'm going to take you step by step. Visualize the squat. Good. Come in. Establish the bar placement on your back. Squeeze the glutes. Now this is the crucial point right here. So a lot of people, they'll bring the bar out like this. You're wasting a lot of energy. And notice what the bar is doing. The bar is shaking. And it takes energy for me to stabilize it. However, if I'm slow and controlled and methodical, check this out. Right here, right here, little steps. And I don't have to do a lot in order to get the bar to settle on my back. So I'm wasting, I'm not wasting any energy to get this set up. So I'm saving the most energy possible in order to give the most energy as possible to my squat. 
But you didn't even squat that, you just walked with it. <laughs> so basically what I'm trying to tell you guys, I use a two to three step method. So the first step is one big step to get yourself out of the rack and out of the, kind of like the rack area so when you come back up, you're not hitting the rack. And the second step is to even out your feet. And then the third step is kind of like a gather set to make sure the weight settles and you're tight in order to start squatting. Okay, so a frequently asked question I get on squatting and squatting tips is how should I place my feet whenever I'm squatting? Now everyone's a little bit different. I've seen people com uh, squat comfortably by keeping their feet straight. Now, me personally, I, and this is like a quick little tip I've learned on the internet, if you squeeze your butt, your feet will naturally come to the point of position that needs to uh, be pointed in order for you to get a comfortable squat. So if I, if I squeeze my butt, my feet are slightly pointed out, just a little bit, so slightly pointed out. My feet are slightly pointed out, right there. So squeeze your butt and your feet will tell you where they want to go. So this is me, normal but clenched just a little bit right there. Perfect. <laughs> so basically having my feet pointed out helps me sit back more in the hole. Like it allows me to get into the actual squatting motion. Because when my feet are straight up like this, whether it's because of mobility or whatever you want to call it, I can't get down in the squatting position as comfortably. But when I flex my glutes, to get my feet pointed out just a little bit more, I can easily come down into the squatting motion. And I'm able to sit in the hole comfortably without like falling back or like being all over the place. <laughs> so now we've discussed kind of like the setup now we're gonna get into the actual motion and execution of the squat so let's come over here I'm gonna get like for for the purpose of this video I'm just gonna get the bar off the rack and get in the squatting position so we're at this point we're about to squat we're getting ready to squat now the next step you want to do is bring air into your stomach take a deep breath Hold it. Now the biggest mistake that, like, especially I got from college, uh, not college coaches, but high school football coaches, is so that you want to get your breath in. You come down, and then as you go up, you use the air to push you back up. And like, that's, that's BS, man. That's such BS. When you keep your air in the whole time into your stomach, and you're pushing against your abdominal wall, that's when you're strongest. Not when you're pushing the air out, because you're not, you're not, you're not creating a pressure to push against. Now, I don't have a belt on right now, but usually you will have a belt to push against, which is going to help you even more to push against your abdominal wall and create more pressure in order to help your squat and get the most out of your squat. Okay, now I know you guys have been waiting for me to actually start squatting. Like, let's talk about the actual squat instead of everything before the squat. I just had to cover the stuff before the squat because it's really important to make sure you're getting the best out of your squat, the most out of your squat. So anyways, now let's talk about the actual movement. So, the first thing you want to do, the first actual physical thing you want to do when it comes to squatting is break at the hips. Now, think, of it, think about it like this, right? You walk into class and you see like a pretty girl, right? You want to sit next to the pretty girl. So, you get the seat. And the first thing you do is you pull the seat out, and then you instantly put your hips back in order to get the seat. So think about it like this. Come in, and you sit down. So notice the first thing I did was break at the hips. Break at the hips, sit down, and that's what you kind of want to apply that same concept to squatting. You don't want to break at your knees first. You want to break at the hips. So you want to push your hips back, and then break at the knees. And your knees are going to be pointed in the same direction as in, uh, they're going to be in line with your feet. So as you go down, you're pushing your knees out in order to help you sit into the hole. And when you come into the hole, what you're gonna do is you're gonna push your hips forward and squeeze your glutes in order to regain the starting position in your squat.
All right. Okay, so the last thing I want to give to you guys and tell you guys is just about breaking parallel. So basically, to know if you're going low enough is to make sure that your hip crease, that your knees are passing your hip crease. So like whenever you break at the knees, make sure that you are getting to a point to where it slightly uh, crosses your hip. So right here, this is about 90. And when you get to this point, you're right below 90. So that is low enough. So once again, you want to make sure your knees are getting right above the crease of your hips. So it's going to be like this. Bam. This is not low enough. This is like right there at that 90, 90, uh, 90 area. 90 angled, 90 degree area. There we go. So you want to break past that right here, and that should be low enough. So guys, I have shown you guys how to squat. I hope you guys were able to take something from this video. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll be making more videos about how to like increase your squat, things you can work on, like weaknesses you can attack. Um, I'm, a, I'm probably doing deadlift soon. So this video is coming to an end. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Like always, if you like this video, please like, comment, share, subscribe. Get better today. I'm out. You haven't even hey, showed them how to squat. To, you didn't even to, show I, them I how to hit squat, it. bro. I need it. It's my thing, man. That's what I do. Can I hit it? But, they haven't, but you haven't even squatted for people, bro. Okay. I'll show you guys how to, how to fully do execute everything. <laughs> I'm going to show you guys how to fully execute everything. Hey, good job, Kelvin. I didn't even show him how to do it. All right, let's, let's go through the whole thing. Okay, now we out.